The carving of Mount Rushmore was completed in 1941, but the rocks it was carved into were completed quite a bit earlier than that, 1.7 billion years ago. How does a geologist know that? And how do they know that the Earth is 4.5 billion years old? The answer is a technique called radiometric dating which lets us tell the age of certain types of rock. Radiometric dating relies on the fact that certain elements have what are called isotopes. These are versions of the atom with extra neutrons in them. Each radioactive isotope decays at a consistent rate. These measurements give us something called the half-life, or the amount of time it takes for one half of the isotope to decay. When an isotope's half-life is up, Half your original element will be gone, transformed into a different isotope. Another half-life and you're down to a quarter of your original amount. A half-life after that and you're down to an eighth, and so on. The length of a half-life is different for every isotope. If you wait for enough half-lives to pass, you'll have a hard time detecting any of your original material. So to date something relatively recent, you want an isotope that decays quickly. To go older, you want an isotope that decays very slowly. The term carbon dating refers to dating using carbon-14, which we mentioned earlier. It has a half-life of 5,700 years, and most of it will be gone by about 50,000 years. To date things that are older than that, you want an isotope that decays very slowly. Uranium-238 has a half-life of 4.5 billion years so it can be used to date things as old as the solar system itself. How do we use this to get the age of something? The unstable radioactive element that you use is called the parent, and the stable, happy isotope you end up with is called the daughter. Dating only works if the only source of the daughter isotope is the decay of the parent. You also need a rock that behaves a bit like a sealed time capsule preventing daughter isotopes from leaving and keeping new parent isotopes from wandering in. That way, if you end up with half daughter and half parent isotopes, you know that one half life has gone by since the rock kept everything locked into the same place. Certain minerals form a tinker toy-like cage around any larger isotopes. This locks everything in place and makes for an excellent time capsule. Zircon crystals, for example, can trap atoms of radioactive uranium inside them, as well as its daughter isotope, lead. So, measure the proportion of uranium to lead in a zircon crystal, and you can figure out when it must have formed. Take this tiny zircon, for example, which would fit comfortably on the head of a pin. Believe it or not, this tiny zircon, which comes from Western Australia, is the oldest piece of Earth we've ever found. It's an absolutely mind-blowing 4.4 billion years old, and comes from when the Earth was only 150 million years after its formation. The zircon was dated using two different isotopes of uranium, uranium-235 and uranium-238. This provided a built-in cross-check as you had two different clocks keeping time within the crystal. Whichever clock you look at, they give the same result. The uranium's been trapped in that zircon since it formed 4.4 billion years ago. Most dating techniques only work with certain types of rock. You can tell when lava erupted, for example, but can't figure out when sandstone formed. That's because the sandstone doesn't trap isotopes in the tinker toy-like cages that we mentioned earlier. Because there are other ways to tell how old things are in the world, we can compare those results with radiometric dating and show that they match. Trees, for example, put down a new ring each year they grow, and you can count backwards and figure out how old the tree is. You can also use carbon dating to figure out how old the particular ring on the tree is. Just like trees, Ice in the Antarctic lays down a new layer each year, creating a similar ringed pattern. We can then compare that to the dates given by rocks trapped in the ice and show that they also match. If radiometric dating weren't reliable, we'd see differences between the results generated by it and those generated by these other methods. Fortunately, radiometric dating is reliable which means if we go to Mount Rushmore, we know we can touch rocks that are 1.7 billion years old.